We are so excited you guys are here. Um, we are, uh, I mean, we've been looking forward to this, and I know you guys have for so long. Um, and I gotta tell you, and I'm sure everybody else has, but it's so good to just see faces and um, be able to actually connect with you here. We're gonna talk a lot about connection in this session. Um, to introduce you really quickly, my name is Erin Ellis, and I serve as one of our assistant directors in the Department of Student Activity. I work specifically with student involvement in our fraternities and sororities. Um, and then I will let. Yeah, and I'm Kara Hansen. I am the graduate apprentice for student involvement in the Department of Student Activities. Um, so I'm a graduate student, but I get to do all these really cool things with this really cool office. So we are, like I said, excited you're here. Today we are talking about connection. We are talking about student involvement. Um, and we think that that is just such an important piece of your Baylor experience here. Um, there are so many different ways to get involved and so many different um, pieces of involvement. Um, so we're going to talk through some of those today. Hopefully, you know, I know that orientation um, feels like a ton of information and I don't know how to sort through this or I don't know what to, you know, compartmentalize or what to um, make sure I remember for later. Um, and so we know that it's a lot of information, but what we definitely want you to do um, is hear that um, there's no perfect equation for what involvement looks like while you're here. Um, and that's the beauty of your own personal experience at Baylor is that you get to design what that looks like. We are just um, a means and a resource for you to be able to figure that out. And so we'll talk about a lot of different ways for you to get involved. Um, one of the things that we truly believe, um, and that's our kind of motto here, is that we are created to connect. So we, are, we believe um, that God has created each of us um, to form connection in life. And that's connection with others, that's connection with our community, um, and that's even to be a catalyst for connection yourself. And so um, we, we want to help you find ways to do that. So what is involvement? I'm glad you asked. Um, a student involvement um, is, a, is a huge part of your Baylor experience because it gets you in, outside of the classroom. Um, we know that you are here to do what? Get a degree, right? That is super important. Um, and we know, um, we also know that being involved um, outside of the classroom actually keeps students here. It's a, it's, a, it's a way that we retain students. And so for all of our caregivers in the room, you should also know that getting involved outside of the classroom actually can improve grades among students. Um, so if it's not an accountability to keep our eligibility standards to join an organization, um, it just means that you're better connected and you're to the university and to other students um, and to just your passions um, and maybe even to organizations that are speaking right into the field that you want to go into. And so we really do think that involvement is um, one of the best ways to keep our students here and to keep them engaged. Um, we want you to know that uh, there are lots of uh, ways to get involved. Um, like from the start. Um, so here we say um, that just because you're going to be a first semester student does not mean that you have to get here and like figure it out and take a long time to do that. You get to be involved as soon as you jump in. Like I said, this is not a prescription for anybody. And so, uh, so we'll walk you through what we think that looks like. Um, how do you do this? How do you find connection? This is the three things that we want you to leave with today. We want to talk about attending, we want to talk about joining, and we want to talk about leading. And the first thing um, is attend, and Kara is going to talk to us about that. All right, so you should all be thrilled with yourselves because you are attending an event right now. Give, give yourselves a round of applause. Give yourselves a hand. You already did it. You're already involved. You're doing amazing. So seriously, um, attending events is the absolute easiest way to get involved, and Baylor University itself is going to put on dozens, hundreds of events throughout the semester, throughout the year, that you can just show up to. Very little work will be required on your part other than just showing up. And showing up is actually really, really important to us. Your presence matters. Um, if we put on all these cool events and no one showed up, not only would it hurt my feelings pretty bad, I don't know about you, um, but it would just, the university would just kind of be a little lame. It would just be a place to go to class and get a degree, and it wouldn't be why you chose this institution. So you showing up to events is not only going to be important for your experience and for having fun and getting involved at Baylor, but it's actually really important for everyone else's experience as well. Because again, if just one person shows up, that might not be really cool, but if all their peers show up, suddenly it's an event. 
So we really do need you, not just for yourself, but for others. You are already a part of the Baylor community, and you're already really important to us. So opportunities for involvement are going to start right away. Again, you're already here. You're already involved. But that first week of classes, we are really going to hit the ground running. Um, we want you to be exposed to as many things as you can right off the bat. And so one of our big, like, premier events is going to be the late night involvement fair. It's usually the first Friday. Um, yes, first okay. Friday. Yeah, so first Friday of classes, we're going to have the late night involvement fair. You can congratulate yourself for surviving your first week of college classes, and you will go and meet dozens, probably not all of them, but you'll meet dozens of our 350 student organizations and see which ones you might want to get involved with. We've got like special interest groups that maybe are gathered around like a hobby. We've got club sports. We've got pre-professional groups that meet for you know your desired uh, career goals and might be good for networking or like getting connected with um, yeah your career goals. We've got groups that are just like social spirit groups. We've got organizations that have like a really big impact on Baylor's campus that we're going to touch on in a minute. So there really is something for everyone. And a lot of these organizations, membership is not this daunting task. I think sometimes people think, I don't know, I don't want to get too involved really quickly. I need to study on, or focus on my studies. I don't want to jo join this big time commitment. I don't know. You talk to these organizations, they're going to tell you what they need from you, and I guarantee you, you're going to be pleasantly surprised and like, oh, that's actually really manageable, and it's really fun, and like Aaron said, it's going to help me be a better student. So late night, that's going to be our very first event. It's going to be awesome. Also, starting during uh, the first week of classes is going to be Mosaic Week. This is actually a week-long event, but it'll start that first Wednesday, I believe, um, and so we'll have smaller events every single night. And this is a really great introduction to like the Baylor culture and maybe the different culture groups on Baylor's campus and a great way to get involved um, both with people who might be similar to you and be exposed to people who are different from you. And so it's just a really great way to um, dive into Baylor's campus and meet people and see what we're all about. Um, we also have a lot of weekly events that you know guaranteed every single week this is going to be going on, and so it's really easy to work it into your calendar. Um, of course, the best, well, the best thing is, too, is like the number of opportunities for free food, <laughs> those are also endless. So you'll probably hear us say that like so many different times. It's like, oh, Dr. Pepper Hour, oh yeah, free Dr. Pepper floats. Uh, so free food, it's a theme that we have here at Baylor in student activities, so get used to that. It's incredible, and again, as a fellow student myself, go to the events. If it's free, it's for me. Make it your motto. Put it in your head right now. So, Dr. Pepper Hour, one of my personal favorites. In case you didn't know, Dr. Pepper was created here in Waco, so we're very loyal to it. Um, and every Tuesday from 3 to 5 p.m., it's a break from classes. If for some reason you have class during this time, I'm willing to bet you can convince your professor for like a five minute break to pop over and get a Dr. Pepper float. It's delicious creamy, frosty, cold, in this hot Waco sun. Perfect way to cool down, especially that first week of classes when it's gonna be quite toasty. So Dr. Pepper Hour happens every single Tuesday. Work into your calendar. It's a social event, y'all. Um, you can join the Dr. Pepper Club if you go to at least 10 Dr. Pepper Hours each semester and get your name on the wall. Immortalized on Baylor forever. You've gotta, you gotta check it out. So, I am, I am a part of the club. I am a part of the club. <laughs> so am I. It's pretty exciting. Um, so, Dr. Pepper Hour, another one of our weekly events is Movie Mondays. Again, every single Monday night. What else are you going to do on a Monday? Nothing. Go to Movie Mondays. Um, we've also got Sundown Sessions. These are really, really exciting. And these is, this is our weekend late night programming. So they happen just about every Friday and Saturday night. You can expect some form of programming, but it's going to change every single week. So this is where it's really fun because it's not just, oh, the same you know, activity every single Friday. I'm sick of doing that. No, they'll bring in artists to like lead, like when everyone paints the same painting, but you know, they walk you through it, that type of thing. They'll have, uh, we had soap making this past semester, which I actually really enjoyed. They'll have sometimes like an open mic night, sometimes like a dance class during, so they'll have the rotating events, but then we always have the constant of the bowling alley and the sub with the late night bowling and the arcade. And it's a great place to gather and be social when you don't know what else to do on the weekend night. So again, this is gonna start the first week of class, but it's gonna go on every single week throughout the semester, and it's really something you don't wanna miss. So, 
All of these activities and more are featured every single week in our What's New BU newsletter. Um, you may have already started getting a lot of emails for Baylor, and you may be getting like a little bit of email fatigue, and you're like, oh my gosh, what is all this information? You scroll through and you go, okay, great, it's not something that I like have some sort of deadline that I have to meet right now, I, I don't care, delete. Don't do that, not with What's New BU. I'm not going to tell you what to do with other emails, but with What's New BU, do not delete it. Read through it. This is going to be where our non-recurring events are going to be advertised probably the best in this email. It's going to be cross departments, sometimes student organizations are featured in there with their events, all sorts of things. Stuff that you might otherwise not know about, but then you see it like on the Baylor Instagram later, and you're like, oh my gosh, I should have done that. FOMO is the worst. Don't be a victim of FOMO. Read what's new be you. Find out what's going on and go to the events. And like Kara said, the nice thing about it too is that it's not just specific to student organizations. Um, and so there are opportunities for you to be like, oh, there's a health clinic this week. That's great. Like it just, it's very far reaching. And so that's why it's a really great thing to have and to look at and really review every week because you're saying like, okay, maybe I'm not necessarily interested in, you know, this particular thing, but hey, there's a lecture happening or hey, someone's got brought a speaker in or whatever. And so um, that's one of the great things about it too is that it's not just a like student work specific thing. Um, it's very broad. Yeah. So. One of the things that we talked about, the reason you need to attend events is because you can get free food, but a lot of times there's also opportunities for free t-shirts. All right, one of the next things that we wanna talk about is joining an organization. And so, right, attend, your uh, presence matters. These things don't happen without you being present at them. Um, when we talk about joining, we say your voice matters, right? Um, the idea is that you are building the organizations that you are uh, becoming a part of. Um, as Kara mentioned, we have over 350 student organizations. Um, they range from so many different things, and you would think like, oh, 350, like, right? Hopefully you find your fit in these 350. Well, if you don't, we can make it possible for you to find your fit by creating a very own student organization of your own. That is correct. And so, I mean, like Dr. Pepper Hour Club, it's like a thing, and we created that. Well, I didn't create that. The person who oversees chartering organizations is really, really cool, and it's me. So, <laughs> if you don't find what you need, email me. We're going to make it happen. I love my job because I get to help students who say, like, uh, these organizations are really, really cool, but we need another one. Come talk to me. And that's a really unique thing about, I think, just this idea of like, we want you to feel connected because if you don't feel connected, then let's help you become connected. Um, and this is not like a, oh, every once in a while an organization is created. Like, we have applications for organizations constantly. Um, and so there's always people who are saying, like, hey, I really have this niche here and I want to fill this gap that I maybe see on our campus. And that is what we are here for. And that's why we are a resource for you to be able to come to us and say, let's make this happen. Um, and it's a great learning experience as well. And so that's one of the things that we want you to know. Um, you can find your passion, um, and this is, uh, th this is what we want you to do, is help find your passion and really connect you with that. Uh, some of the questions that we often get um, that our office oversees is uh, questions about our fraternity and sorority life. Um, so we're going to tell you a little bit about that. Um, our campus has four different councils. Um, that's the Interfraternity Council, the National Panhellenic Council, the Panhellenic Council, and the Unified Greek Council. Um, we also have a few local organizations that are just specific here to Baylor. Um, but we have a very robust um, and very broad-reaching uh, fraternity sorority life community here on campus. We do um, have a deferred recruitment uh, process. Um, which is great for you guys because it means you do not get to campus and go, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to make friends right away and commit myself to this organization. Um, no, we don't want you to do that. We believe that it's really, really important for you to get established here, not just as a student um, academically, but as a student socially. And so we have, um, we have a deferred recruitment, which means you cannot join until you have finished a semester of school. And so this is your opportunity in the fall to get to know organizations. Um, getting to know our fraternities and sororities or getting to know different organizations, um, but spending that time to really kind of hone in on like what am I interested in, what am I passionate about, and how can I find an organization that connects me with that. Um, we also want you to know 
that uh, membership in these organizations, something that we're really, really proud of, um, is uh, gives you values. Um, they're values-based organizations, and so um, they are opportunities for you to cultivate values like scholarship, um, values like uh, meaningful relationships, academic, uh, academic excellence, um, service and philanthropy are really big for us too. Um, and so we, we do believe that these organizations are very prominent in those areas. Um, we have a really big fraternity sorority community. Um, about one in three of our students are involved in a fraternity sorority. Um, but I will say this, it doesn't mean that that may be for you, right? Um, again, we want you to be able to find that fit um, and if this is not a fit for you, it's not a fit for everybody. And it wasn't a fit for me uh, when I was an undergrad. And so um, it's not necessarily something that um, everybody sees their place in. Um, but I think what's really unique about them is they're very, they're very visible on campus because they do host a lot of our traditional events. Um, and so if you do want to learn more about them, it's easy to find them and it's easy to get more information about them. Those values that I talked about are not necessarily um, specific to our fraternities and sororities. Um, they are uh, values that we really do feel like joining any organization is going to give you an opportunity to cultivate. And so stepping out is a great example. Um, this is our university-wide day of service. Um, groups get together. You can, you can participate as an individual. You can participate as an organization. You can participate as a group, a group of friends who live together. Um, and this is just, again, another way that we are reinforcing some of these values that we think joining an organization is going to do for you. Um, the other thing we want you to know is that are, there are lots of opportunities that joining an organization can help you be a voice for others. And so maybe that means you are highlighting um, a vibrant dance or a vibrant culture um, or food. Um, and so for this one in particular, this is our gateway to India. Um, this is our uh, uh, Indian Student Subcontin Subcontinent Association. Um, their big uh, like culture show that they do. Um, it's beautiful, students lead out on it, students participate in it. Um, and these are just a number of different ways that you can also join and get involved and have your voice heard. We also think that our big traditions are a great way to get involved um, and you can be a part of an organization that, that helps put on some of our big traditions. Um, Christmas on Fifth Street is a very, very popular one, um, and it's not just one group that puts it on. There are so many different organizations that are speaking into this, um, that are decorating Christmas trees to, to put around campus. Um, even some of our uh, departments or our choral, uh, choral departments uh, perform during this or during Christmas on Fifth Street. So again, lots of ways for you to be involved and to join an organization that's speaking into our Baylor traditions. Whatever organization you decide to join during your time here, Connect is a great spot for you to start. Uh, Connect is our online uh, event and organization management system, um, and this is, as, a, as a, someone who's already sitting in this room, you have a bear ID and password already, which means you can have access to our Connect system. You all saw a QR code when you walked in. This is the same QR code. Um, if you are a student, we would love for you to take out your phone and uh, uh, click on this QR code. Once you do, you will have just RSVP'd for your first campus event, so congratulations again. Um, Connect is a great spot for you to just start exploring, right? What am I interested in? There's a search. You can say, I want sports clubs, or I want to learn more about fraternities and sororities. Um, I'm interested in a service organization. Um, you can keyword search, and it will show you all the different organizations that we have on campus. Um, this is a great opportunity for you to create maybe a short list of these, and then when late night comes around, your first week of, of being here, you're able to say, ooh, I remember looking at this organization, and I was really interested, and I wanted to get more information, so I'm going to go visit their table at late night. Um, but this is kind of our one-stop shop for all of our student orgs. It also has a calendar of events, and so if you're ever kind of wondering hey, maybe what didn't get in the what's new BU, uh, what's going on, this is another great place for you to access that information. Yeah, that's the beauty of our student organizations is that they do kind of combine our first two points of attend and join. Even organizations that you don't join attend their events. They want you to. They're putting on these big events. Sometimes they're fundraising. Sometimes they're just raising awareness for a cause. A lot of times they have free food, free t-shirts, all that kind of stuff. Support other students, even if it's not your organization. Attend those events, have fun, make friends, it's awesome. And that also is gonna lead us into our next point, which is lead. 
So the concept of leadership might be a little bit daunting to some of you. You might be like, oh my gosh, I just want to get to campus and live my life and I don't ask you to take on any sort of responsibilities just yet. Or some of you might be like, yes, this is where I shine. Give me that microphone. I want to lead. So there's a little bit, there's a spectrum, I guess, of leadership at Baylor as well, which is what's really cool. Some of it might be maybe like what you're more familiar with, of like, okay, I have an executive position in my student organization. I serve as the president of the chess club, you know, something like that. That's a leadership opportunity. But some of our leadership opportunities look like just joining certain organizations, such as the Baylor Chamber of Commerce. So this is a student organization, but it's sponsored by Baylor. And so it's got a little bit of a cool hybrid where it's student run and student led, but they put on some of Baylor's biggest events, like Homecoming and uh, Dia de Loso and Family Spring. Weekend. Yeah, yeah, they get to take care of our awesome live mascots, uh, Judge Joy and Judge Lady. And so that's one of those organizations where sometimes it's a great compromise on leadership of like, okay, I don't necessarily have to be the one in charge, but I get to be a part of this organization that is in a way in charge. They have a big influence on campus. And we've got tons of organizations like that. So again, look on Connect, start making your short list of things you might be interested in, or just wing it and show up to late night and say, yeah, this is what I want to do. I recommend the first option though. Um, and you know, find those leadership opportunities. It also might look like student government, which again is a way to really have an influence on Baylor's campus um, in like the larger sphere. Um, we have the Freshman Leadership Council, we have students who hold positions in student government who really get to have a say in what's going on at Baylor. Um, the type of say that staff members listen and we say, okay, SGA voted on it, so we have to make it happen. So, like, I'm talking actual change, not just, oh, I'm in charge of the 20 people in my organization. So there's a really cool spectrum of, based on kind of how much leadership you're looking for, uh, you can get involved in it. Um, so one of the things that we want to help you understand also, um, and, and I think I said this already, but this is not, um, attend join lead is not a linear process, right? So we don't want you to think that when you get on campus, okay, all I'm allowed to do right now is attend, and then, oh, once I'm, you know, a little bit used to campus, then I can join an organization, and then, oh, once I'm much older and so much more wiser and have so much more free food in my belly, I can finally lead. And that's not the point here. The point is to say that this is very fluid. Um, you can get here right away, and like Kara said, you can jump into leadership positions. Um, you can get here and you'll attend. As a senior, you'll still attend Christmas on Fifth Street and all these different uh, things that we have to offer. Um, and so the, that's the beauty of it too, is that there's no um, there's no real way to do it right, if that, or there's no way to get it wrong, which, whichever one that is. Um, but because it's your experience and you get to make it what you want and that's what we want you to hear. Um, the other thing that we want you to uh, remember is that when you attend your presence matters, when you join your voice matters, and when you lead your influence matters. And so you can have a far reaching impact on this campus regardless of, of what you're doing and, and whether you feel like that's insignificant or not by just showing up to run the line. Because like we said, the line doesn't exist if you don't show up to run it. And so you are a big part of making so much of our campus life happen. We also want you to know that um, there are some tips for your success for here. Uh, so we want you to think about some things, right? Um, dip your toes in, figure out what you really want to get involved in. Maybe you want a far-reaching involvement experience, and so you want to join many organizations, um, and that's great. Or maybe you're like, nope, I'm going to commit to one, and I'm going to go deep, and I'm going to be a leader in this or a president in this. And that's great too. Um, I think just making sure that you are seeing where your passions line with uh, or line up with the organizations that you, or the events even that you're attending. Um, and so think about that. Um, also think about like where can you contribute, right? I want to give to some organization or I want to create a new organization to give back to the university. So where can you give the most? But just also remember you want to get something out of this experience. And so don't stop at giving. Where can I get the most, right? What organization or what um, event or experience is going to give me the kind of uh, Baylor experience that I want to have? So think about that as well. 
I think it's also good to think about um, where do you feel comfortable, right? Um, that's an easy one to think about. Um, utilize Connect, like we said, to find out more information about organizations. When you log in there, you can contact organizations, and so you can even say, like, hey, I'd love to know more about this um, what organization. What do you do? Um, what does a time commitment look like? And um, that's a great way to get plugged in there as well.